people think that robotics is ready to take off, that robots will soon do whatever humans do, but we are really quite far away yet. In reality, what do we need AI for? Do we need AI to write poetry? Do we need AI to make, I don't know, new paintings? Do we need AI to make a movie? It's not a coincidence that everybody worldwide is on a race. The AI race. Yes. Because they understand that AI is here to transform economies. How do you teach these machines to learn or, or behave yeah. like humans would? Yeah, and this is a very difficult problem because uh, the humans have the superior human brain. We don't have such a capability in robotics these days. We are trying with foundation robot models to get there, to create a model that can generalize and execute tasks that make sense and that have impact in our lives, but we are not there yet. And of course, the human brain is supplemented by the amazing the dexterity of the human hand. Yes. And the human hand is a very, very sophisticated end effector in nature. A musculoskeletal system that can achieve a lot of precision and that can adapt to everyday life scenarios. So this combination is that makes humans what we are today. And in robotics, people think that robotics is ready to take off, that robots will soon do whatever humans do, but we are really quite far away yet. Because robots need to start being reliable and robust in the simple things. You know, the pick and places, the pick and place tasks, the assemblies in factories, helping humans where they need it most, and then to reach the level of dexterity that humans have. Well, the humans have the human brain. Yes. The robots, they don't have this yet. This is what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to replicate this amazing human brain. So you're analyzing human biology and it's... No, I wouldn't say that we follow a biomimetic approach. I would say that we are trying to get the intelligence. We are trying to develop large language models, these things aren't built for robotics. Yeah, Are we really waiting really. for AGI for robotics uh, to take off? I'm waiting for it. Okay. Is it close? No, it's not close. Are you trying to achieve that yourself or are you waiting to see I am, what I am, can be I am trying. by okay. training data sets? And let's analyze a little bit why. Because the large language models, they have to do with text, words, and you know the data is readily available everywhere. You go on the internet, right? Sure. And you can find a lot of content. Books, newspapers, research papers. You can find encyclopedias. You can find the whole civilization is now on the internet. And the data set is there. You can use it. You can harness the data set in order to develop superior intelligence. But what about robotics? Let's think a little bit about it. Uh, and let's go there, is this uh, plant, in order to show you what I mean. For example, in robotics, we may have to manipulate this. When I manipulate this, what I have here? Positions, I have orientations, I have forces, and I have also torques that I am applying on the object. So you see that the dimensionality of this task is very much increased, right? Data. I was reading yesterday a very interesting article that uh, in China, they have designed huge factories where they have humanoids and they train the humanoids every day. In physical tasks? In physical tasks. It's like training a humanoid how to make your coffee. But they're not just having you train one machine. See, and this is a very good question. You cannot collect data from one robot. Yeah. You will not have enough a variety of the end effector characteristics. You need to train it across uh, different uh, robot grippers, different robot hands, you need Different to have... weights. Exactly. 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 You can imagine the complexity. Yeah. So a, a robot, let's say a robot goes to pick up something. Like, is it able to know, like assess the weight? Yeah, we, have, we have what we call robot perception models. Okay. What are the robot perception models? They are computer vision techniques. They are machine learning techniques, deep learning techniques that allow us to identify the pose of an object. Is this accurate enough? No, we are improving the models every day and every day. And all these things depend also on the complexity of the tasks that you want to execute. Sure. If you want to identify just a, a bottle of mustard in order to make a sandwich, you find the bottle of mustard, you grasp it, you pour a little bit of mustard in your sandwich. Okay. But if you want to identify a bolt, a small bolt, 
that may have reflexives for the camera. And you need to pick it up. And then you need to go and find a threaded hole and assemble this. This is much more complicated. This is where the AI is not ready, right? Yes. This is where we need to deliver value. Because in reality, what do we need AI for? Do we need AI to write poetry? Do we need AI to make, I don't know, new paintings? Do we need AI to make a movie? So there's a human thing. Bravo, yeah, I completely agree with you. So we need more time for humans to focus on these things and take the value of AI and put it where people need it. Yes. In parts of the production that destroy the human joints. You know, a lot of people I go to factories these days and I see a lot of people that do not have healthy careers. They focus on tasks that destroy the destroy job joint. The companies have huge labor gaps. So you can take this person from the job that is destroying the joints and put this person inside the same company in another position or supervising a robot and having more productivity for the company. So I think that we can use AI in a more clever manner. This kind of AI unlocks a trillion dollar opportunity. It's not a coincidence that the United States is putting so much money into AI. It's not a coincidence that China is increasing the money that they invest in AI. It's not a coincidence that everybody worldwide is on a race, the AI race. Yes. Because they understand that AI is here to transform economies. Will be different, in my opinion. Does anything scare you? Yeah, a lot of things. About, lack of about how this technology is going to be applied? Complete lack of regulation. You Complete. think it should be regulated more it specifically? Should, we should start discussing regulation. We should start creating a framework, right? Complete freedom for everybody to do whatever they like. It's problematic, right? Sure. We need to be a little bit careful because the potential impact of the technology is significant and some countries, they are more ready than other countries. I mean, the United States, they have a lot of companies, they have a lot of experts, they have a lot of government funding now eh? and funding that comes not exactly through the government, through the private sector, but they have the support of the government and China is supporting the Chinese companies. What is Europe doing? I worry a little bit about Europe. And uh, I worry about Europe because I am originally Greek. And I want to see... Thrive in this thrive. economy. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. And another argument, you know, Greece has lost a lot of the opportunity to participate in all industrial revolutions. Do you see real factories around Athens? There are some, but very, very small ones. Okay. You cannot compare Athens with Greece. You see, I said Athens. It's different. Do you remember why I said Athens? Because most of the population of yeah. Greece is in Athens. Sure. Does this make sense? A lot of people are concentrated here. If you go to the other parts of Greece, they are empty. There are some manufacturing plants. There are some big companies that try to be innovative, try to export, try to become bigger. But we have lost our chance to thrive in the previous industrial revolutions. And this is a huge chance, not only for Greece, but all yeah. the countries in sure. Europe, to jump from the past to the future of AI and be a core part of the fifth industrial revolution. And the barrier to entry is much lower now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have you, are you familiar with Plato's allegory of the caves, the illusions, and the caves? Brings me to my next question about robots and feeling. I know you're mainly focused on the industrial task, but do you think that robots will ever be able to feel or are we just tricking ourselves with illusions and shadows? Feel. I cannot, I cannot, uh, if you had asked me five years ago, I would be more uh, pessimist. What does it mean, feel? Feel, it means that you collect all the data from your environment, even the human body, right? It has sensors. And we collect all the sensory information. We create what we call feelings. But are the feelings just brain processes? Or are the feelings something beyond the brain? 
It's a philosophical question. If they are brain processes, the feelings, they can't be replicated, right? So if you had asked me 10 years ago, I would say mm, very difficult or maybe in the very, very far future. Now, can a robot feel? Potentially, I cannot see a future where this is happening. It might happen. Do you feel like trying to make robots more human-like could potentially take something away from our own humanity? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I don't think that human likeness will ever be completed. And what I mean completed? You know, in robotics we have a biomimicry where we try to replicate exactly, as an exact copy, the human body, the yes. human brain, the human hands. Mm -hmm. And we have also by inspiration. Human likeness is most of the times by inspiration oriented. So we take the basic principle, you know, the human hands have five fingers. The human hands have tendons. Or the human hands have very, very sensitive skin. And we try these principles to implement them technologically. But we will never have an exact copy. Or I don't like, uh, I am a scientist, I don't want to say never, but it's very, very difficult okay. to have an exact copy. Yeah. So the human likeness will never be a complete human likeness. The feelings, the human feelings, even if the robots have feelings, will not be like the robot feelings. I don't think that you can get away from humans the essence of being a human. Yes, the robots can feel, but they will not be human feelings. What happens if we merge with the technology. Ah, you're talking about bionics now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really believe in bionics. I really believe that humans will be augmented. I am very passionate about this. I think that humans will be very much augmented in the future. Will it always be so invasive as the chip in the brain? I don't like chips in the brain. I don't like them. They don't feel uh, a good solution to me. And you know, they have a lot of technological problems, yeah? You know, the moment that you put a chip on your brain, you start having the deterioration of the cells. Yeah, and yeah. they start reacting to it. Of course, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So augmenting is on a completely different frontier. You see a lot of people all around Athens. You see a lot of people trapped in their apartments on a wheelchair. And you know, if you try to go out in Athens, People park on different parts of the streets, the roads are blocked. Mobility for people that have paralysis is awful. Yes. It's not a good city mm -hmm. for the people that live like that. But can we make them walk again? I think that yes, in the very, very near future. Is this something that we need to prioritize? 100%. 100%. Is this something where AI can play a very big role? 100%. So instead of focusing on making movies, making, I don't know, uh, writing poems with AI and uh, writing new music songs, right? Maybe we need to focus on making our lives a little bit better. Yeah, yeah then that's what you're doing. Thank no, you. no, not me. I try to contribute just a very small stone in the whole effort. Thanks for the conversation. I really Thank appreciate it.